It is cold. Okay, welcome back to Fighter Fork. And tonight I am gonna be making pasta from scratch. Well, we're gonna be making pasta Alfredo. Uh, before I start that, I just wanna remind everyone there's gonna be a code word in this episode and I'm gonna give away a copy of my book, my cookbook. So comment that code word down below and you'll be in the draw. Now, I need two ingredients to actually make the pasta from scratch. I haven't made pasta from scratch in like 20 years, so this is gonna be interesting. Um, I need 100 grams of flour per person. Now me telling you that it's 100 grams of flour per person is about as useful as pedals on a wheelchair. It's like, who the hell brings a scale to the bush? No one. So, let's do this thing by feel. And as I said, I haven't done this in 20 years, so this is gonna be interesting. You get some double zero flour. Um, double zero just means it's a really finely ground flour. You can use plain flour, but flour is inexpensive anyway. So getting some, you know, a, a better quality flour or finer ground flour won't be too hard. Uh, I'm sure. Okay, give me a sec. Didn't think I'd need a knife yet. Now, I'm just going to cook pasta for two. Uh, not because I'm a fat bastard, but because you can actually freeze this once you've made it, and it's really good. Um, so, I don't know. I just thought, I don't want to make it twice. It's just as easy to make two serves as it is to make one. And to go with your 200 grams of flour, you need two eggs. So, make a bit of a well in the middle, I think. And I didn't bring a pasta machine or anything, by the way. I'm doing this all rustic. <laughs> Fred had an egg earlier, so he's very interested in this. Aren't you, Fred? Uh, I have washed my hands, but not that it really matters. I'm the only one eating bloody, so bloody stuff, so... Okay. Break these yolks. You can use a fork. Uh, I just find these sorts of things a lot easier with your hands. So give it a bit of a stir, get that egg yolk mixed in, so it should be kind of consistent and orange. Fred, go away. All right, now that's consistent colored, we slowly start to add the flour in. Don't let your well break like I just did. Whoop, 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 catch it, catch it, catch it. That'd be a terrible civil engineer. Can't even contain two eggs. I wish you what I'd do without a dam. Alright. Stir, 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 stir. So, this is going to be, quantity wise, we're going to go off consistency, not off, um, not off strict measurements because I think it's the only way that this is going to be achievable for anyone else in the bush. All right, so it's starting to get quite shaggy. Some people do it with one hand so they can have a clean hand in case they need to add more ingredients. Um, those people are very talented. I am not. And you don't need a big breadboard like I've got. I just happen to have this. Um, any kind of a, like a plastic camp table or a stainless camp table would be perfectly fine. I actually, genuinely, the reason I'm using this breadboard is for filming, because it's darker against the um, flour and eggs, so that you can see it. It's just about contrast, because that's the reality of filming stuff for YouTube. Okay, try and mop up these little bits of shaggy dough and maybe a touch more, more flour. Yeah, the way to get your, the flour off your hand, or the dough off your hands is just to rub them together. Don't try and wash them all the time. You're gonna do this for about, about 10 minutes. So I'm gonna lock myself in and get on with it. All 
Alrighty, looks pretty good to me. So I would have loved it to be a bit more yellow um, with some nice quality, you know, farm eggs. But all I could get was free range eggs from the supermarket on the way. So <clears throat> that will do me. Now I'm going to rest that for about 10 minutes. To do that, all you need to do, have a bowl, whack it over the top, let that gluten do its thing. And um, yeah, I'm going to roughly clean up around here. I'll see you in a tick. Later. Okay, actually turned my microphone on this time. Now let's make some, this is why I always use two microphones, because I'm too bad at not turning on my microphone. Let's make some pasta. Uh, if you don't have a rolling pin, obviously just grab like a wine bottle or a whatever, some sort of a round smooth bottle, a rum bottle, or a, I don't know, some Pellegrino, I don't know, something like that, another bottle. Um, I'm gonna put this into thirds, because it's too much to roll out at once. Lots of flour down, grab my rolling pin and get into it. Okay, one sheet done, and I'm going to fold this over, it's got lots of flour on it, and then I'm making fettuccine, so I want to do it into sort of probably 6mm, 8mm wide strips. Hopefully the Italians are still happy. We'll see how we go. The YouTube comments are always fun when I do Italian dishes. How good does that look? Oh yeah. All right, rinse and repeat. Last piece. All righty. So, wait about half of that. The other half I'll put in tup or Tupperware or, sorry, a um, sealed container because apparently people get confused when I say Tupperware and it's not the actual brand Tupperware. Oh, I've done myself a solid here. I've um, managed to put all of my tups in my camper trailer. So yeah, let's skim over that bit. We'll deal with it later. Now, let's make the actual pasta dish. Okay, so we've got some boiling water, and I'm just going to add <laughs> right, pasta on the chair. Um, about a tablespoon of salt. You don't need much salt in this because we're using salty cheese. And then drop it in there for three minutes. Not too long. Oh, I'm so excited. Alrighty, it's been about three minutes. Take that off. So I've got my pasta in here. I'm just going to get a little bit of pasta water out. I thought I had a cup here. Clearly I didn't. Yeah. Hold off to the side. All right, a bit of liquid gold. Put that there. And then we can get this pasta out and put it in your bowl. I'm not pouring the water out, so usually I drain the water and keep the pasta, but this water's got a purpose here. And that is to keep this bowl warm while we do the rest. So, I want to get about 40 grams of butter. Now, there are actually little gram measurements on butter, so that's actually really easy. And I've left this out for a while, so it's a little bit soft. Cut it up into a few bits, and you throw that in. Stir it in there with a tiny bit of pasta water to help it melt and become creamy. While I'm waiting for that to melt, you don't have to stir it constantly, I'm just gonna start grating some cheese. Uh, the amount of cheese that you think looks right is probably about right. So this is, um, uh, what's the name? Pecorino Romano, and this is Parmigiano 
uh, Reggiano, which is like a proper, not just Parmesan, it's it's a proper aged, aged Parmigiano. Okay, stir that around a bit, make it creamy. Oh, the texture of this pasta is just phenomenal. So about half Pecorino, half Parmigiano. If you can't find these, I mean, the Italians will kill me, but Parmesan will do. Like if you live in a country town or something. But I got this all, I got all my ingredients from Coles. Okay, that's all looking creamy, so we can start to add a little bit of cheese in. Creamy. Oh, that is just like, do not a ever add cream to Alfredo. And it's funny how the Italians will get on me about whatever they get on me about, despite the fact this is actually an American dish. Alfredo is named after Alfredo's, which is a restaurant in America that was open in sort of the 30s or something. Um, and that's where it came from. It came back to Italy, but the Italians don't really eat it. The reason I chose Alfredo for this recipe is because you specifically really need fresh pasta. It's just not the same without it. A little bit more cheese, because, you know. <laughs> that is just... I might chuck a little bit of green garnish in there for some gratuitous B-roll. I'll see you in a sec. Definitely some of the least impressive B-roll I've done. Well, that's fine. Don't care. Just give me fresh pasta with fresh, fresh pasta Alfredo. That is stupidly good. Stupidly good. Oh. <laughs> Indescribably good. Oh, let's go with beer. This might be the first recipe I've ever got to the end of without having a beer. Dinner recipe. Because I've had messy hands. Yeah, it goes well with beer. That's ridiculously good. I'm sorry, I can't stop eating this. I'm gonna go nail this by the fire because it's cold as hell here and warm as hell there. Um, see you in the next one. Don't know what the code word will be, but it'll be in there. Don't forget to comment it. Cheers. Mm. Oh, so warm here.